I just wanted to start off this video by letting everybody know that 90% of my viewers aren't subscribed. These videos take a ton of effort to make and every sub makes it worth it. So drop a like and a sub and let's get into the video. The duo's den is a super unique and cozy solo duo base that actually gets more defendable the more it gets raided. When raiders breach walls, they'll open up additional angles for the base owners to defend from, while also exposing hidden turrets that cover every inch of the base from the shell as well as the shooting floor. Some of these turrets aren't visible at all to raiders until it's far too late. Coming in at a whopping 20,000 metal fragments cheaper than my last trio base, the Duo's Den has an even higher minimum raid cost. Your door path to core is significantly more expensive than raiding through walls, and with the addition of vending machine bunkers on the roof and plenty of locker kits distributed throughout, this mighty little base will give raiders much more than they bargained for. Our build cost and upkeep is shown on the screen now, and keep in mind this is the final upgraded state with all armored doors and armored core and armored loot rooms. Our footprint is a standard honeycombed hex core that has breach peaks on three sides and then wide gaps on the other three. So, let's take a closer look at the base you'll be living in this wipe. We'll start off with our disconnectable external TC. I've opted to put some respawns and a locker kit in here, but you could also add a second window. Here's the upkeep times three. To disconnect your external TC, we'll place a roof right here and twig. This will break these two floor frames, which will allow you to replace your main TC in the event that it gets raided. Next, we'll step into our simple and cost-effective gatehouse that gives us great angles into the compound. Each of the three sides of our compound can fit up to three large furnaces and has these great breach peaks that overlook all of it. Stepping in our front door, we can see the wide gap angles that give us coverage of our entire compound. Each of these garage doors leads into one part of the base that has the breach peaks and mobility up. It's also covered by a turret from each side. These breach peaks give you awesome angles throughout your compound, and we can come straight up this ladder hatch into a double bedroom. We have locker kits tucked in the honeycomb here, and as you can see, we can traverse our way all the way up to the roof exit without opening any doors to our shooting floor. There are some more angles to defend from up here, and we have our roof exit as well. We'll take a look at the roof in a little bit though. We can step back down from this roof peak into our shooting floor. As you can see, we have these shark teeth style wide gaps that give us great coverage of the compound. We're taking advantage of these breach peaks on the shooting floor that give you an amazing head glitch on raid base and great coverage of long angles outside the compound. As I mentioned before, this base actually becomes more defendable the more it gets raided, and these low walls are a perfect example of that. As raiders breach these walls, it actually opens up this low wall peak that looks directly into your core. It's a perfect place to defend from that raiders won't see coming. Talking about it is one thing, but let's see it in action. Pummeling a bunch of rockets through the side of the base will splash open the garage door that hides the turret, as well as the low wall peak. It'll also expose the turret in the wide gap shooting floor that looks down on the breach. This highlights another reason that we're using our wide gap foundation as a roofless airlock. Raiders will have to ladder over this and then make quick decisions once they realize there are turrets waiting for them. Next, we can head directly into our bedroom floor. This can fit a few beds as well as lockers and batteries in the honeycomb. I also have a couple large and small boxes here for additional storage. We can then drop down into our main living space, where we've got our tier 3 workbench, a couple of loot rooms, some vending machines tucked into the honeycomb, as well as a locker hidden behind the tier 3 workbench. Overall, this should give you plenty of storage space for common crafting items. Dropping down into our starter core, we have a pretty standard hex core with a loot room and our main TC. And as you can see, main TC upkeep is incredibly reasonable for a solo or duo. If you're struggling with the HQM for some reason, always remember recycling components is a great way to get HQM, and you can always buy 16x scopes at Bandit Camp and recycle them for 40 HQM apiece. Once we get up to our roof, we can see this vending machine bunker that will add another 15 rockets of raid protection to our base. Keep in you can also use this as a drone accessible shop on your roof. Our roof is protected by these three turrets, but there are spots for three more turrets. The turrets in the shooting floor also have great angles to defend your peaks from, and if a minicopter is flying in, these actually will still see it. So potentially six turrets could be looking at a minicopter trying to land on your roof. And now that you've seen the entire base, let's get into the build steps.
First, we're going to claim our build location with three triangle foundations. Wall them in how you see and put a double door frame here. Put a wooden double door on for now, and then make sure your TC is positioned like this. This will make it easier eventually when there's a window frame here to upgrade the foundation, back wall, and ceiling. For now, we don't need this frame. We can start furnishing our starter base with a furnace, a campfire, a couple of small boxes, and our sleeping bags. Keep in mind this isn't the full starter, this is just to get you through the first few minutes of wipe. After you've hit a couple more stone nodes, we can expand the base by mirroring the three triangles on the other side. This will complete our hex core. Put ceilings on these two tiles and leave the jump up open. Put your furnaces here to use as a jump up, and then seal in the top. For now we can seal this with a wooden double door, but if you have a sheet double door already, that's great too. We'll go ahead and pick up our starter deployables and then window in our TC when we can. Feel free to upgrade the TC compartment as soon as possible. We can put a loot room to the left of this, and for now I'm just putting four boxes here, but you can also fit small boxes. Our tier 1 workbench fits right next to the jump up, and then we can put our bags back down. At this point, you'll also want a shotgun trap on the jump down to protect against people going deep. Just make sure you get these double door frames on beforehand so you don't block the placement. As you get the resources, make sure you put double doors down on all of the frames. The last thing we'll do is come to the right of the door and place a foundation here with a wooden half wall on top of it. This will be a temporary jump up so you can use twig if you prefer. And just like that, your starter unit's done. To start upgrading and expanding our starter unit, we'll pick up our tier 1 workbench as well as our bags and the shotgun trap. Place down garage doors as soon as you get them on all of the available sockets. To get this one down, you'll have to pick up your boxes if you put them down already. We can replace our tier 1 workbench with the tier 2, which you'll need to craft the garage doors. We'll then replace the shotgun trap as well as our two sleeping bags. You can also fit a small box under the tier 2. We'll start building our second floor by putting a loot room next to the main entrance. After that we'll put two single doorways with a window in the middle. It should look something like this when it's done. After yours looks like this, we'll put a ceiling on the entire thing. The ceiling tile that goes above the window frame should remain wood though because we'll have to hatchet this out later. Go ahead and fill out these frames with windows and doors. At this point, we'll build these three double door frames and then build our loot room. I'm just using four large boxes here, but you can definitely fit small boxes as well. We'll then go ahead and put garage doors on all of these frames and make sure the rollers on these two aren't facing inwards so they don't create a problem with the jump up later. You can always pick these up though, so don't worry if you make a mistake. I like to protect my build location as early as possible from griefers, so we'll move on to building our externals. We'll start by putting a triangle foundation on each of these three sides. When you get to the TC compartment, it's a good idea to upgrade this to HQM now, because the foundation won't be accessible later. You'll repeat the following step on all three sides of the base. Come to one of the foundations we just built, and build a triangle and three squares. Delete the initial build up and build back with triangles. These last three will upgrade to sheet metal. It should look like this on all three sides of the base. These are your wide gap foundations that your shooting floor will get built off of. Next, we'll build a square off of each of the wide gaps and then three triangles to use as a gatehouse. Build one half moon, a square, and then another three triangles where our external TC will live. Make sure you use two half walls on the side facing the base and then wall in the rest of the perimeter. Put a ceiling on it and then a single door here. Place down your externals, and then put a window over top of them. Also make sure to lock your externals. You can delete our build up and then finish building our gatehouse with a window frame and a door frame. If you want a turret pod on top of your gatehouse, build another half height wall here, and then put floors on each of them.
Finish the bottom portion of the gatehouse with two more window frames and another door frame. On top of the gatehouse, we'll place two barricades, and in the turret pod, we'll place the turret. Keep in mind you can do this whenever you get turrets and electricity, you don't have to do it right at the time of building the gate. On the wide gap foundations, we'll place a door frame, and then we'll place two window frames to the side of it. It'll all reconnect back to the gatehouse with this stone floor frame. The last thing we'll have to do here is connect the external TC to the gatehouse. Make sure you repeat the same thing on the other two sides of the base and all of your externals are down. To place our compound walls, I like to put a twig triangle off of either side of every gatehouse and then line it up like this. It should get you four compound walls on every single side and they should line up perfectly. If you want to place down your large furnaces now, this is the place to do it. You'll want to put them in each of the corners near the gatehouses. Just make sure that they're lined up so they don't block visibility in your compound and that the turrets can still see them. Before getting the shooting floor and all of the honeycomb on, I'm going to go ahead and upgrade the starter unit. You don't need to do this now, it's just easiest to show in the video at this point. We'll start off by armoring the loot room on the second floor. We can then sheet metal the ceilings and just wait to upgrade these door frames and window frames. The rest of the chute can become sheet metal as well. And then we can upgrade the ceilings. Make sure this one, because it's over the loot room, is also HQM. Dropping down into our starter, we can upgrade the remaining foundations, walls, and ceilings. The side with the TC and loot should all be armored and the rest could be sheet metal. Now our starter core is actually pretty strong, and believe it or not, we're rounding the corner on finishing up the base. We just have the shooting floor and bedroom floor left. In this step, our base is really going to start coming together. Come to each of the wide gap sections and place the following frames. I'd recommend upgrading the door frame to metal just so then it doesn't get soft sided as easily. Place the frames on this side of the wide gap as well, and then we'll finish it off with some floor tiles on the top. Then repeat the same steps on the other two wide gaps. At this point, we'll make our way to the three empty sides of the base and build a hexagon off of each one. This last foundation will raise, but if the terrain doesn't allow it, that's no problem, just do a half wall. Once that's done on all three sides, we can go ahead and honeycomb these sections. You'll see this will form a large triangle. We'll then put double door frames on each of these sockets and then ceiling tiles on top of them. Then just wall in the top section. We'll create our breach peak by placing half walls next to the raised foundation with window frames on each. Put two roof tiles and then a floor frame in the middle. Once that's up, we'll place a triangle ladder hatch inside of it. To finish our breach peak, take a triangle roof and rotate it out. Place one on either side of the raised foundation. You can see now our breach peak is complete. You can put a turret on that raised foundation at any time. Finish these sections off with ceiling tiles here and then place one right over the gap. Make sure this is connected to main base because this will be part of your honeycomb. To finish off our breach peak towers, we'll place full walls on either side of a half wall. Then we'll place a window on top of the half wall. Ceiling tiles go along the entire top of this, and then we can put the low walls in for our lockers. We'll leave these half walls out until we get enough lockers to fill all these spots. You can only access the code lock from the bottom here, so make sure your teammate gets auth on it before you seal it with another half wall. Covering these with the half walls makes them less visible to raiders and also makes them impossible for grubs to pick out from the outside. We'll finish up our breach peak tower by coming to the top of them and placing two more windows and a half wall. We'll then put triangle roofs on each of these pieces and then ceiling tiles above us. 
Use a single door on the right and a double door on the left here. You can place a garage door and this will be our mobility to roof. Once you've done the same on the other two sides, all of our breach peak towers are complete. Now we can move on to our wide gap breach peaks. Place three half walls with three windows on top of them. Then place a triangle off the middle one to hold our turret. Again, rotate these roof ramps facing outwards, and then place triangle roofs on the top with ceilings above. Repeat the same steps on the other two sides and you've completed all three of your wide gap breach peaks. At this point, we'll start building out our bedroom floor by placing a double door frame on each side that has the wide gaps. On the other three sides, we'll place honeycomb just like this. Go ahead and put a ceiling on the entire thing. On the wide gap sections, we'll put these low walls here as well so people can't get through. We'll finish off the shooting floor by placing embrasures on all of the windows. Don't forget to add embrasures to your breach peaks as well as your pseudo airlocks. Just a reminder, these are here to add a little bit of friction for raiders and give you the ability to rotate around without the need for a full shell. Make sure to put double doors or garage doors on these sections as well to prevent people from getting into your breach peaks. Coming up through the mobility, we can add these double door frames to seal off our mobility chutes from the rest of the shooting floor. We can then put some double armored doors on our bedrooms. This was included in the HQM cost of the base, but you can definitely use a garage door instead. Next we'll find the two triangles opposite of the wooden ceiling tile and put lockers in them. Go ahead and put a window frame over your lockers and then a glass window. You can also use a single door here, especially if you get an excess of single armored doors from Bradley or Oil Rig. Find the wooden tile and put a sheet metal wall to the right of it. Then in the final triangle, we can put our battery compartment. You can feel free to HQM this entire thing. It's really a good idea, especially given how much this base relies on turret coverage. We'll then put double door frames down on all of the sockets in the bedroom here and spam garage doors as usual. Our last step in the bedroom is to get beds down. You can easily place two of them in this orientation while still fitting a few boxes around them. The next step we'll be chopping the wooden ceiling tile here to unite the two sections of our base. In order to do that we'll make our way into the lower portion of our base. Craft up a couple of machetes and in no time you'll chop right through it. Before we get our tier 3 workbench down we'll go ahead and pick up this window then place a locker behind it. Make sure to put a code lock on this and get your teammate authed on it. You can also fit a furnace back here or some drop boxes it's up to you. And we'll go ahead, put the T3 workbench in front of it, upgrade the wall to sheet metal and rotate it hard side towards us. Then we can put the window back on as well as a window embrasure. And just like that, our tier 3 is now our jump up from our second to our third floor. We can make it a little bit easier to jump up by upgrading these frames to sheet metal so their hitbox is a little smaller. Next, we'll seal up both of these doors and replace them with a vending machine in the honeycomb. We can start off by chopping out the half wall and replacing it with regular honeycomb. We'll upgrade the top here to armored because this triangle will take splash through the wall. Finish off the honeycomb from the ground down here and then make your way around to the other sides and repeat the same steps. When we get to the third side that doesn't have a doorway on it, there's no need to put the triangle in the middle, just honeycomb the whole wall. Making our way back inside, we can upgrade the frames here and rotate them hard side facing us. Now is the time to upgrade these to armored doors if you have them, because you won't be able to replace the doors after the vending machine is placed. Go ahead and put a vending machine in here. It might take a little bit of wiggling, but I promise you'll be able to get it. After that, make sure you disable broadcasting, unless you want to set these up as flex boxes with all of your AKs or boom in it.
If we pick up the window behind the tier three workbench, you can see that we can still access the furnace and the locker. To finish off our main living space, we'll add a shelf here with a large box and a small box on top of it. To place the small box, it's easiest just to stand on your workbench. We'll also place a small box under the tier three workbench. And just like that, your main living space is ready to be decorated and lived out of. Turrets are essential for everybody in Rust, but especially solos and duos. We'll build a windmill tower off of each of our gatehouses here to ensure that we have enough power for all of our turrets. Each battery can power 9 turrets, and there are 12 total turrets, meaning that you'll need two large batteries in the base. I also recommend that you put a heartbeat sensor or something right here to prevent grubs from twigging over. You're welcome to place turrets wherever you see fit, but here are the positions that I recommend. I would start by putting three turrets on the roof. Next, these three turrets in the shooting floor are incredibly important to maintain control and they overlook the breach when the walls break. Another three go into each of the breach peaks. Just keep in mind, if these are upgraded to sheet metal, the conditional model will actually prevent you from placing it. So an easy fix is just to upgrade one of them to HQM. It's inconvenient, but that's life. After you get these up, the final three turrets are on the gatehouse like we showed in the beginning. Also, this isn't really electricity, but this is a super handy spot to put shotgun traps that prevent raiders from moving around in your shooting floor and will definitely catch door raiders by surprise if they try to go up your ladder hatch. I also recommend putting a shotgun trap on your jump up to your roof. This is especially useful before you have turrets online. Our 15 rocket vending machine bunkers work just like all of my other recent videos. Place two twig low walls here and slot a vending machine as far back in the middle as possible. Delete the twig walls and then place an HQM wall with the hard side facing out. Just like that, the loot is inaccessible to raiders, but as the base owner, I can place a twig roof right here and instantly get access to it. Keep in mind this can also be used as a drone shop. So that wraps up the duos then, congratulations. If you made it this far in the video, seriously thank you so much. Just watching the content helps out my channel a ton. If you enjoyed it or you learned something new or maybe you're going to use this in your next wipe, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Like I mentioned earlier, only 10% of my viewers are subbed, which means that 90% of you are missing out on getting the latest notifications for my bases. If you always want to stay up to date on what's the latest and greatest in building in Rust, that's the button to do it. I'm going to close out this video with a little bit of a montage of the Christmas village that some of the people in my Discord community put together this year. If you want to be involved in events like this where we get to just spend hours hanging out and talking in Discord, building cool stuff, head over to discord.gg slash dust. We're always on, super friendly, and if you have any questions, just let us know. Anyways, 2022 is an amazing year, and let's see if we can get to 100,000 subs in 2023. It's a pretty crazy goal to try to double where we're at, but I believe in all of you. Anyways, I'm going to shut up so you can enjoy the footage, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Come